Before we actually take our record, we're going to practice and we're going to try it in a couple times. So let me go ahead and put my gloves on here, Jake. Now our goal with this is to obtain the horizontal plane, which lines up with the intrapupillary line, also the vertical, and again on this little plate we want to make sure the facial incisal of the central is right against the vertical part of the plate and the horizontal part of the plate. So go ahead and turn toward me a little bit. So what we do is we leave the posterior away from the posterior teeth, away from the arch. We go ahead and put this front plate against the centrals, both incisally and facially. Make sure the midline is on. Look at the horizontal bar and then also look at the bow to make sure that it is parallel to his occlusal plane. So let's try that one more time. Open for me. We leave the back of the plate out of occlusion. We put the front teeth against that plate and then we're going to rotate this up until it's parallel to his horizontal plane. All right, so I'm going to use a bite registration material. Some, some clinicians use little tabs, little plastic tabs available from Panadent that you actually stick to the plate, put it in a hot water bath, wait till it softens, and then you put it in place. I prefer a bite registration material. I use a bite registration material because it sets up very, very fast. So we're going to go ahead and inject just a little bit. We don't need much on the posterior of the plate. Turn toward my chin down a little bit. Again, the back side of the plate away from the teeth. The two centrals on the flat of the plate and against the front of the plate. And then we're just going to rotate the back up, making sure that the horizontal bow is parallel to the interpupillary line as well as his occlusal plane. Jake, I want you to take your thumbs and just kind of push you against the bottom of that. Just like that. I'm going to look at the profile to make sure it's parallel. Perfect. I'm going to make sure that the front part of the bow is parallel to the eyes. The vertical bar is perpendicular to the long axis of the face and also at his midline. Good. Okay, you can go ahead and let go of this. Okay, let's go ahead and snap it out. And you can see basically this is what this looks like. Now at this point, I like to take a photograph of this to send to the laboratory. Sometimes this might be the thing we do at the end of the day or let's say the laboratory, after they pour up the model, realize the patient has this severe maxillary cant. And with the ear bow or the earless face bow in place, the cant makes the models look skewed on the articulator. So I like for the ceramist or the diagnostic waxer to be able to go back and look at this photo and see that this truly is the plane, both the aesthetic and functional plane. And he did have that posterior cant. So I'm going to put this back in. Jake, I'm going to have you go ahead and hold it. Okay. Why don't you take your thumbs and hold it right here, if you can. Uh -huh. Right, perfect. You got to make sure it's seated. Okay. All right, so let's walk over and I'm going to take a photograph of you against this dark background, okay? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move Jake. And what I did is I just bought a blue background, put it up on the wall. We're going to go ahead and have him stand parallel chin down a little bit, focus the camera. Again, my goal here is to get the horizontal and vertical axis of the plate. Look straight into the camera. Perfect. Great. You can go ahead and take that out, Jay. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So, we got the photograph. We got our record. This little plastic piece just snaps out. 
This is what we send to the laboratory with the case. Again, unlike a traditional ear bow where the pieces can, can misalign or become loose in the transfer to the ceramist, there's really nothing to go wrong here, which makes this so easy and very inexpensive. If you have multiple cases from your office, instead of having three or four or five traditional ear bows that can run up to $400 to $500, we have these little plates that again are very, very affordable. Lots of times I'll take just a Sharpie felt pen and I'll just write the patient's name. Just in case in the laboratory something gets mixed up and they don't know which plate goes with what model. Or maybe we do it in our office. So now, what does the laboratory do with this little plate? Well, with both the Stratus and the pendant, as I mentioned, the laboratory will have this mounting plate that they mount to the articulator. Then they go ahead and take the plate that you gave them from the facial dental analyzer, they snap it into place, and then they would take the maxillary model and they would seat it into the plate and then close the articulator and mount this to stone. So now we have this very accurate, not only horizontal, but vertical representation of Jake's arch, but also will give us a very accurate relationship between his teeth and the hinge axis.